Uh, I want to recognize Councilmember Roger Berliner is here with us this morning, this afternoon. Uh, I know he was in a meeting this morning, so thank you for joining us today. <laughs> is Catherine Clay here? Catherine has the distinct honor of introducing uh, someone who has uh, received numerous accolades just in the last uh, 30 minutes, but Senator Sarbanes has um, been our honorary co-chair since, since this conference's inception. So it's a very special place in all of our hearts. Catherine. Thank you, Barbara. Everyone keeps uh, stilling my, my thunder here, and I've rewritten this about two or three times already. So I think I'm just gonna go with my last rewrite. Anyway, as Barbara said, I'm Catherine Clay. I'm Vice President and Community Consultant in Community Development Banking for PNC Bank, a proud sponsor of the Affordable Housing Conference. And it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction. Um, as a matter of fact, his reputation and presence is such that much has already been said about him today. And of course, that person is the Honorable Senator Paul Sarbanes. Um, when Senator Sarbanes decided it was time to move on and leave the United States Senate, he was the longest serving United States Senator in Maryland's history, having served 30 years from 1977 to 2007. To say that he was also the most widely respected and revered United States Senator is an understatement. We Marylanders remain proud to be able to say he is ours. Senator Sarbanes worked for the people of Maryland for more than three decades. First as a member of the Maryland House of Delegates and then for three terms as Congressman for Maryland's third Cong congressional district. Paul Sarbanes was well known for his low key and very effective style during his 30 year tenure as a senator. Then when it was apparent that an incredible lack of transparency and accountability were the common threads in massive accounting fraud, in 2002, he co-sponsored the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, or enduringly called Sarbanes-Oxley, Sarbox, or simply Sox. This historic act put his name in the headlines repeatedly and permanently. Sarbanes-Oxley has become a household phrase. Its creation of a strong and independent oversight board to oversee auditors of public companies is very, very busy at the moment. Sarbanes is a graduate of Princeton University, Harvard Law School, and Oxford University. Ever since the Affordable Housing Conference of Montgomery County began holding its annual summits, Senator Sarbanes was always in attendance, and a few years later, he became its honorary chairman. The Paul Sarbanes Excellence in Community Service Award needs no explanation of its existence and creation. It provides recognition to people who have made significant contributions to the affordable housing community in Montgomery County and the uh, surrounding region. Some past recipients who are with us today include Jim Brown, Eugene Ford Sr., Chuck Edson, Rick Nelson, and now Conrad Egan. It is um, without further ado that I present to you our very own Senator Paul Sarbanes. Well, Catherine, thank, thank you very much for that 
excessive introduction. I really, you know, we should have gotten together years ago. We could have done a great combination. We could have gone to events and you could have been introduced me. It would have been absolutely terrific. But thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be back with the Montgomery County Affordable Housing Coalition Conference, which I really regard as one of the uh, premier organizations in our state addressing the housing issue. Uh, they've done an absolutely, this is the 22nd conference, and they've done an absolutely terrific job over, over the years. I want to uh, thank Michael Stegman for being with us and for his uh, talk just a few minutes ago. Uh, we confirmed him in short order when he came before the committee, as I recall. And uh, we thought that uh, one of our jobs was to screen out someone who didn't deserve to be appointed, but if they deserved to be appointed, it was to get them into the position and get them into the position quickly so they could go ahead and do the job. I recently had this experience. I was on Capitol Hill and I was, I was trying to help someone get through the nomination process, which of course has become an absolute pitfall now. I mean, I really feel for these people. So I'm talking to a newly, a relatively newly elected member of the Senate and about this particular person, about the need to get them into the position. I said, you know, if you don't confirm these people to fill these vacant positions, the government won't be able to work. And he looked at me and smiled, because that's what he wanted. He didn't want the government to work. So it's a, it's a real, it's, I think, a real problem for the effective functioning of our government, what's happening right now in terms of, in fact, there's a wonderful candidate from Montgomery County itself, Tom Perez, who's being held up right now from becoming Secretary of Labor. And he, do, in my judgment, would do a terrific job. So Michael, thank you very much for coming and being with us today. I want to acknowledge Barbara and Norm, who've done so much to keep the the uh, af af affordable housing conference moving moving forward. I'm delighted to see my old colleague uh, Chris Van Hollen and Elijah Cummings. She had two of the eight members of the Maryland uh, congressional delegation here today. I try to pressure my son to coming, who's another member of the Maryland delegation, uh, but he's heard me enough, so he wasn't really ready. <laughs> ready to do that, but Chris is doing a terrific job in that budget committee responsibility, and it's an exceedingly difficult and tough job, as we know by reading about it. And I'm grateful that I didn't follow Elijah to the microphone, as you all will appreciate. Uh, Elijah has a marvelous ability to take issues and then put them in human terms, as you heard right here today. And it's a, it makes an enormous, uh, an enormous difference. And uh, Ike Leggett and Anthony Brown have left, but I have high respect for their role in public service. Now I have a, a terrific honor today in presenting this Community Service Excellence in Community Service Award. I've known Conrad Egan for a long time. I'm not, I'm not gonna put a number of years on it. And he is really, in my view, Mr. Affordable Housing. He's made extraordinary contributions, uh, really over a lifetime, which has really been committed to this issue. We started out in Detroit, so in Baltimore we always felt a kinship to him for that because we kind of identify those, uh, those two cities. And uh, it's a career where the cause of affordable housing has been a hallmark. Uh, 
he worked for four years in Detroit, and then he went to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in 1969 and spent 17 years with the department, uh, rising from field-level community development through a series of promotions uh, culminating in the senior executive service position of director of the Office of Multifamily Housing Management. Now, that was uh, really an extraordinary responsibility because uh, he managed all of HUD's multifamily properties nationwide. And uh, then in 19... 86, uh, he moved to the National Housing Partnership, which was at the time the nation's largest owner and manager of multifamily rental. Uh, and he stayed there until 1993 when he went back to HUD. Uh, there was a new administration elected. Those elections make a difference, you know, in terms of, of, who, gets, of who gets to serve. And Conrad went back, went back to uh, HUD and uh, stayed there until 1996 when he went to the National Housing Conference. Of course, the National Housing Conference, founded back in the early 1930s, is the nation's oldest housing policy advocacy organization dedicated to ensuring safe, decent, and affordable housing for all Americans. And he stayed there until 2010. At the end, of course, he became the president of the National Housing Conference. He had a one-year leave of absence to be the executive director of the congressionally created Millennial Housing Commission, and he continues to be active in many ways. In Fairfax County, he's on the, the number of the board, housing boards, and commissions. So this is this is a man who's really committed himself to this issue, and in my judgment, has done an absolutely terrific job. I always look to Conrad for wise counsel. Uh, good judgment on the issues that came before us. Um, there are lots of people they don't know who Conrad Egan is. They don't really know the name, but they have benefited from his efforts over the years. They're living now in decent and affordable housing because of him. Uh, they don't, most of them don't know the name because it doesn't reach them. But he made an enormous difference in their lives and in the life of our community. He's been enormously effective. And above and beyond that, he's just a wonderful, decent person. So I am delighted to come and be with you today, present the Excellence in Community Service Award to Conrad Egan. Conrad. Well, thank you, Senator Sarbanes, um, and uh, it, it's a particular honor and privilege, and I'm very humbled uh, to receive this award today, but I, I, it is particularly um, means something very personal to me because it's called the Paul Sarbanes Award, and uh, as you indicated, uh, we've been colleagues, friends, and uh, have worked together for a, a long time, 
And uh, in some of my previous incarnations, when I had a chance to work with the senator when he was in the Senate then, uh, I was always impressed with his intellect, uh, with his energy, and with his commitment and, and passion. Um, I also want to uh, recognize, even though he had to, had to leave, uh, Congressman Cummings, uh, because it is a particular honor also uh, to receive an award that, at the same time that Congressman Cummings is receiving an award from the Affordable Housing uh, Conference of, of Montgomery County. And of course, Congressman Van Hollen has um, uh, been very kind to join us today, uh, and we're, we're, glad, we're glad that you're here too. Um, also, it's a particular um, honor to uh, be receiving this award uh, when my good and longtime friend, Mike Stegman, uh, is also here. Uh, and thank you for your, your kind comments, Mike. I appreciate that very much. Uh, we first got to know each other when we worked together at HUD uh, for Secretary Cisneros. And um, uh, that was uh, one of the best experiences that I've ever had, not only working for Secretary Cisneros, but working with people like Mike Stegman uh, when, when we were there together. And of course, I, I must thank the Affordable Housing Conference of Montgomery County. Um, and um, I, I am privileged to serve on their board, and I've watched and benefited from the leadership of, um, of Barbara and Norman and, and Ralph and all the other members of the board, and of course our executive director, uh, Lise Tracy. Um, but I also want to acknowledge, as has been mentioned uh, here earlier today, and I won't, I won't go down the long, the long, long list, uh, but it, it is a very impressive gathering uh, of local, regional, state, uh, and national leaders here uh, today. Um, and I just want to um, wind up by saying two things. First of all, uh, I'm going to borrow Congressman Cummings' quote and say that I wish I could cut this up and uh, share it with all of you, because what um, limited uh, success and contributions I, I may have made uh, over time, and I hope I can continue to keep making them, uh, has been as a result of your support, uh, your, your wise guidance, um, and uh, it's been a real pleasure to work with all of you, and I hope I can continue to do that. So thank you again very much, and thank you especially, Paul. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm, I get to present another award, so. <laughs> uh, this is the Partner of the Year Award, which the uh, House of the Affordable Housing Conference uh, gives. And uh, before I actually present the award, I want to call to your attention on your tables, there's a little, um, there's, it looks like that, if you can see it. It's in a plastic thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's, um, that's the Capital One Bank Architectural Awards Program, which was done earlier in the day. It was done at the outset of the, of the conference. They presented the, the award and I was struck, well, I'm interested in this because I'm interested in good architecture. Winston Churchill once said, uh, we shape our buildings and then our buildings shape us. And I think there's a lot of truth to that and I think it can make an, en an enormous difference to people just by uh, what, what a good architect and a good builder can do in terms of the surroundings they, they put them in. But I was struck by, right at the top, it says, Capital One, investing for good. I like that phrase, investing for good, and I just wanted to underscore that and recognize it on uh, the part of the Capital One people. 
Capital One has earned over the last year, as a consequence of its investments, a spot among the top 10 affordable housing lenders nationwide. It's in, in the list of the top 10 affordable housing lenders nationwide. Of course, as we know, Capital One acquired Chevy Chase Bank, which was a longtime Montgomery County institution, uh, four years ago, and it set out on an active program of financing, of philanthropy, and of volunteerism, which has had an impact on our community. I want to digress for just a moment to make an important point. In recent times, mostly since I left the Senate, I followed that admonition in the country music song refrain that says you, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. But uh, these attacks on the effort to get more affordable housing as contributing to the undermining of the um, financial strength of the country, the argument being that to get affordable housing, you have to di digress from accepted safety and soundness standards in the financial institutions. I absolutely reject that argument. And uh, the empirical studies don't support it. I mean, these financial institutions, which got into deep trouble, they weren't out there trying to do tremendous things for affordable housing. They were out there trying to make excessive monies is what they were trying to do and cutting, cutting the corners. Uh, none of us who ever advocated for affordable housing did it in the context of departing from accepted and necessary safety and, and soundness standards in financial practices. And the good financial institutions don't do that. They recognize that. I mean, they try to do affordable housing, but within the context of appropriate safety and soundness standards. So I wanted to make that point because there's an effort, I think, on the part of some now to undercut or undermine support for affordable housing by trying to establish this linkage. And as I said, I absolutely reject that. Um, the Affordable Housing Conference of uh, Montgomery County is, you know, obviously uh, quite excited about this performance by uh, Capital One uh, that is now one of the nation's uh, top affordable housing lenders. And so I'm delighted today to ask uh, Jim Taylor, who's Capital One's Director of Housing and Community Development, uh, to come up and receive the Partner of the Year Award uh, from the Affordable Housing Conference. <clears throat> well, thank you, Senator Sarbanes, for those very kind remarks and for calling out the theme of investing for good, which is I'm going to say a little bit more about in just a minute. Um, I'm really honored today to accept this award on behalf of Capital One and honored that we continue to be um, an ongoing partner in the work of the Affordable Housing Conference of Montgomery County. And I consider it a great personal privilege to serve as a member of the board of the Affordable Housing Conference in support of the affordable housing initiatives that are so progressive in this county. The senator shared with you um, some of the statistics around Capital One's commitment to affordable housing, being one of the top 10 affordable housing lenders in the, in the country. Um, and those numbers do tell quite a bit of the story. We, last year, just in this region, uh, financed $166 million of affordable housing rental units, um, which, which accounted for about 2,800 units within the region and also resulted in hundreds of permanent jobs, which of course is really important to the overall economic well-being of the region as well. 
but I think those numbers really only tell part of the story. The rest of the story is really in the mindset that our employees bring to our role in the community. And that mindset is that while we recognize that we're a national organization, um, when it comes to this region, we are a hometown bank. And we take that role and that responsibility very seriously. That's why our approach to community involvement is so focused on the key building blocks of community economic development, those being small business and workforce development, financial literacy, education, and of course, affordable housing. We wouldn't have earned our national standing in affordable housing without our local Montgomery County partners like Montgomery Housing Partnership, Victory Housing, Landex Development, and the Housing Opportunities Commission of Montgomery County, just to name a few. Organizations we've worked with to invest in the brick and mortar of our communities. Investments in 7610 Maple, Parkview Towers, Tanglewood, and Sligo Apartments in Tacoma Park. The residences at Thayer in Silver Spring, Victory Court in Rockville, and Lasco Manor in Bethesda. We're also raising our presence on the single family housing side of affordable housing. As earlier this year, we announced a $2.4 million philanthropic commitment to help increase home buyer education and services for low and moderate income individuals in the greater Washington, D.C. area. In addition, earlier this year, we introduced a new first time home buyer product to this market. And I want to take this opportunity for just a moment to introduce to you our new uh, first time home buyer loan originator on our community development mortgage team. Armando Santiago is sitting at the table here. And uh, yeah, hand for Armando. So for those of you who'd like to know more about our first time home buyer products, Armando's your man. And please reach out to him either later today or, or at any time in the, next, in the coming weeks and months. I also want to just recognize someone who I know many of you know, and that is Ed Delaney, who could not be here today. Ed is our senior capital officer who leads our affordable housing uh, multifamily transactions for this market. Ed sends his regrets that he couldn't be here due to an out-of-town obligation. So I'll just close by saying thank you again for recognizing Capital One for this award. At Capital One, we always say that by investing in small business and workforce development, financial literacy, education, and affordable housing, we are investing for good. That is, investing in what's right for the community and investing in what is permanent and transformative. On behalf of all of us at Capital One, I want to thank you for working with us to achieve that mission. Thank you very much. I've been out of politics now for six years, but I'm still enough of a politician that I want to correct an oversight because I recognize Barbara and Norm. I didn't mention Ralph Bennett, and I should have done that. And I'm, Ralph, I apologize to you. And I recognize all three of them for the wonderful work they've done here with the conference. 